You have a uh, heavy to extreme cell at your 1 to 2 o'clock. The reports the pilot of the plane may have been doing aerial acrobatics just before the... By no stretch of the imagination are we healed, and we may never be healed. It's the afternoon of December 16th, 2012, on the ground at the Somerville, South Carolina airport. The pilot of November 5714 Whiskey, a Piper Cherokee 160, is preparing to depart for Fayetteville, North Carolina, 135 nautical miles to the northeast. The 63-year-old pilot is a former Army physician and current chief of surgery at Fayetteville Medical Center. He holds a private certificate and instrument rating. Though he's accumulated roughly 1,000 hours total flight time, in the past nine years, he's logged only four hours under the hood and 16 hours in actual IMC. Limited as it is, that experience will be helpful during today's flight. The Duat's weather briefing makes it clear that Fayetteville is IFR, with ceilings between 300 and 1,000 feet. Visibility is expected to vary between 3 and 6 miles, with rain showers in the area. En route, the situation is better. The area forecast calls for clear air between roughly 2,500 and 8,000 MSL. Likewise, ceilings and visibilities east of the route are expected to be somewhat better, and the pilot chooses Columbus County Airport, 45 miles southeast of Fayetteville, as his alternate. It's just after 2 p.m. when the Cherokee, carrying over four hours of fuel, departs on the 75-minute flight. The aircraft is soon established in cruise at 5,000 MSL, and all communications are routine. 45 minutes later, though, things start to slip. The pilot seems distracted after being handed off to Fayetteville approach, in one case failing to respond to an instruction. It's 3.04 p.m. when the controller clears him to descend onto the initial segment of the ILS Runway 4 approach. Therefore, one four whiskey descend and maintain two thousand three hundred. Verify established. Two thousand three hundred. And quarter seven. Yes. Okay, Roger. And is uh, hitting five five zero five five still at the point? Affirmative. A few minutes later, the pilot advises the controller that he's established on the localizer, though he appears to be having difficulty tracking it precisely. Shortly thereafter, he's handed off to Fayetteville Tower and cleared to land. But the aircraft's path down the final approach course has become erratic, and ATC takes notice. Number one four, was he receiving the localizer? Had a little bit of trouble right now. I think we have lost some showers, but I think we're getting there. Number one four, was he Roger? Maintain 2000, suggest heading 020 to join the localizer. 020. Over the next few minutes, things continue to deteriorate. Hello, oh, please. Level. One four whiskey looks like he's um, drifting around, of course. All right, did you? Is it? November one four whiskey. Did you ever receive the glass phone? I'm oh, sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we're about, I realize we're about to end. Number one four whiskey, Roger. You want to come back out for another approach? Uh, I think you're doing okay. If it looks good to you. Number one four whiskey. I can't really tell with, uh, with your rate of descent if you want to start that descent and execute a localizer only approach. Declared uh, ILS correction localizer runway four. Thirty seconds later, with the aircraft at roughly 1,100 AGL and a mile from the runway, the controller makes a decision. Number one four whiskey approach clearance canceled. Climb and maintain 2,000 fly runway heading. Copy. Climb on runway heading and climb to 2,000. In hindsight, it seems likely that the pilot's troubles began around the time he was handed off to Fayetteville approach, probably while operating in visual conditions. Post-crash analysis showed that his statement about losing some gyros was correct. The aircraft's vacuum pump was inoperative at the time of the accident and had almost certainly failed, or at least begun to fail, by the time of the initial approach. The casual response to this problem on both his and the controller's parts suggests that neither understood the true gravity of the situation. In IMC, 
A vacuum pump failure and attendant loss of attitude and heading indicators is an emergency situation. Partial panel flying is challenging. Few pilots stay fully proficient in it, and in real-world flying, many fail to recognize that there's even a problem until it's too late. Given that, and given the weather and fuel situation, there was simply no good reason for the pilot to initiate an approach, much less press on when things were obviously going poorly. It's now 3.15 p.m., and the controller asks the pilot if he'd like to try again. We're still showing overcast here at 500, and you're just coming out of 1,200 feet there, half a mile out, so we're just going to do this again, if that's all right. I'll be fine, thank you. Please. The tower controller coordinates the second approach and hands 1-4 Whiskey back over to approach control before briefing the controller relieving him on the situation. He's having a lot of problems holding the steady heading, so watch him real hard when he does this next approach. Oh. Meanwhile, the pilot continues to struggle with directional control. 1-4 Whiskey, what heading are you going at this time? Is that two, that was currently uh, 3 one, zero. And 1-4 Whiskey, Roger, you told us by heading up at 2 two zero. Are you copy? Thanks. And one for whiskey. Are you having problems with your airplane? You came uh, fly appropriate heading? Hey, I'm, I'm uh, currently no gyro. I think the best thing for me to uh, climb a little bit and go to my alternate of uh, Columbus or some point south. Uh, one for whiskey. Can you navigate to um, Tittle Airport since you have no gyro? Uh, yes, sir, I can. One, one for whiskey. Where do you want to go to? Uh, Columbus would be fine, sir. Roger. Cherokee 1 4 Whiskey, crew direct Columbus County Airport, climb 18 3000. The pilot, however, fails to acknowledge the clearance. Over the next 30 seconds, the aircraft is clearly not under positive control. There are 5714 Whiskey Fair Approach. Approach. And uh, it appears that um, your altitude has changed there radically. You're going up to 1800, down to 1800, down up to 2300. Are you okay? Uh, no, I'm not up here right now. Do you want to come into Fayetteville? Oh, best that thought goes unfinished, and soon the controller queries the pilot about his experience with no gyro procedures. All right, one for whiskey. Can you do um, gyro, non-gyro standard turn? Uh, I think so. Yeah. All right, and one for whiskey. Um, turn left. One for whiskey. Stop turn. Uh, yes. I want the whiskey. Um, you didn't turn left at all, sir. Despite this, the controller tells the pilot to expect another ILS approach to runway four at Fayetteville. And soon, things seem to be going much better. As the controller spends the next few minutes vectoring one four whiskey for the approach, the pilot is able to fly headings and altitudes with only minimal deviations. I want four whiskey for miles on post break. Turn right, heading northbound over zero one zero. Maintain 2,000 to establish a localizer. Clear ILS Marine 4 approach. By the time ATC cleared the pilot of 1-4 Whiskey for a second ILS approach to Fayetteville, two things should have been clear to all involved. First, the pilot was having serious trouble controlling the aircraft in IMC. Second, his control problems abruptly disappeared for several minutes prior to the second approach. The reason was simple. The aircraft temporarily entered visual conditions. To be fair, the pilot never pointed this out to ATC, though it's also fair to say that the controller should have observed the situation and drawn appropriate conclusions. Given those simple facts, diverting to the alternate airport, as the pilot had requested and was briefly cleared to do, was plainly the correct choice. The weather was generally better to the southeast, and Columbus was solid VFR with 10 miles visibility and a 5,500-foot ceiling. Unfortunately, the pilot's control difficulties around this time seemed to have persuaded ATC that the best course of action was a second approach to Fayetteville, still IFR under 500-foot ceilings. Even more unfortunately, the pilot obviously busy with the aircraft and apparently reluctant to press matters with ATC, accepted the suggestion even after entering VMC. That compound error sealed his fate.
I want full whiskey for miles on post break. Turn right, heading northbound over zero one zero. Maintain two thousand to establish a localizer. Clear ILS Marine four approach. You copy? Turning to heading at zero one zero. Maintain two thousand. Clear for the approach. In the cockpit, the pilot turns to the specified heading, and just over a minute later is contacted by ATC. I want full whiskey. You pick it up the localizer. All right, you're going to start your descent. You're starting your descent down to two. Uh, say again, there, sir. One forward, you maintain 2,000 when you establish on the localizer. You establish? That's on the localizer. All right, you picking up the glass scope? Negative on the glass. Roger. It's the last anyone will hear from Cherokee 1-4 Whiskey. On the controller's radar scope, the aircraft has already begun a descending right turn off the localizer course. On the ground, Witnesses hear a loud engine noise and see smoke rising from a wooded area. And one for whiskey, you was, are you not on the localizer anymore? One for whiskey, maintain 3,000. No, five, seven, one for whiskey, fair approach, how do you hear me? If you can hear me, I don't. Hey, do you see that aircraft out there at all? Negative. I think that aircraft might have went down about five miles. The crash of Cherokee 1-4 Whiskey holds a number of lessons for both pilots and air traffic controllers. Most obviously, it highlights the need for pilots flying IFR with vacuum-powered gyros to understand their system's vulnerabilities and install backup instrumentation or power sources. Partial panel training and no-gyro approaches are stopgap measures for worst-case scenarios, not the first line of defense. Equally important, Pilots and controllers both need to understand that, as with the loss of any primary system, a vacuum failure in IMC is an emergency situation. Had the pilot of Cherokee 1-4 Whiskey declared an emergency and made it clear that he needed to remain VFR, he'd almost certainly be alive today. Stepping back a bit, it should also be said that, given his limited experience in IMC, the decision to undertake a solo flight to an airport with ceilings barely above ILS minimums was questionable. That's not to place all the blame on the pilot. Indeed, the NTSB and its probable cause pointed broadly to ATC's deficient training in emergency procedures, and specifically to the Fayetteville controller's inadequate assistance as contributing factors. Be that as it may, however, as pilots, the buck still stops with us. Controllers have a difficult job, and more than ever, they do it without the benefit of personal flying experience, a fact worth remembering. If we fail to make our own decisions, we risk having them made for us. And as this tragic, unnecessary accident shows, a positive outcome is by no means guaranteed. <laughs>